Pilots, Drain Man here, and today I want to quickly and easily show you how to fix your Express LRS receiver. There are so many different brands and makes and models and designs and shapes and sizes and antennas, and it goes on and on and on. But when you go to flash, it's just very simple, but sometimes it doesn't go to plan, or maybe you put the wrong firmware, or maybe you had a blinking light, and now you got a solid light, or you had a fast blinker, now you got a slow blinker, blah, 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 blah. Whatever happened at your Express LRS receiver is not working for you, I'm going to show you how to fix it. So I'm going to quickly and easily show you the quick, fast way. If that doesn't work, I'm going to show you plan B, which will always pull you out of the trenches and get you up and working. So here on my table, I've got several different ELRS receivers. I've got stuff from the amazing Super D with uh, built-in Gemini. If you're interested in that, I've got a video on that. I'll put that down in the video description for you. We've got Happy Model and Fox Ear and Access, and I've even got this little guy by Beta FPV with a ceramic antenna. Just to show you, it doesn't matter which receiver you have. If you are wanting to learn how to bind your receiver to your radio and go fly, I've got a full video on how to do that and I walk you through it step by step by step. I will put that video down in the video description for you. Right here I have a cool little stack that I'm going to use. If you have any flight controller laying around you can use that. If you don't just use the quadcopter that you're working on or the one that you were building or trying to put your receiver in. That'll work perfectly fine. And you're going to need to connect your receiver to your flight controller so that way when you plug it in it powers up. So I'm going to go ahead and solder this on right now. Ground, 5 volts, RX, TX. Now when connecting your receiver, if you don't already know this, RX goes to TX and TX goes to RX. I just connected it to TX. I'm going to grab my TX and I'm going to connect it to RX. Then you need 5 volts and you need a ground. So as you can see, I now have my receiver connected to my flight controller. You have to complete this step in order to move on to the next step. All right, the next step is to connect your newly connected stack to your computer. So go ahead and plug in, whether it's Type-C or micro USB. Boom. Once you're connected, jump into your PC and open up the Betaflight configurator. Once you have that open, you can go ahead and head down to the receivers tab, and you're gonna look for this tab right here called telemetry. Go ahead and turn that off. It is crucial that you do this, and the reason why is because your flight controller is trying to communicate via the same communications that your ELRS receiver is gonna be using, and it's just not gonna work out. Go ahead and click save and reboot. All right, I'm gonna press disconnect and then I'm gonna close out Betaflight. This is important because when I go to make my connection and I do it to Express LRS, if Betaflight is trying to grab that COM port, it's just not gonna work. So the next thing I need to do is go ahead and open up Express LRS. I will unplug my flight controller. And here's where the fun part comes in. It's so easy, guys. This is easy, easy stuff. So before I do anything, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into my Express LRS configurator, and I'm going to find the correct target. All right? So my device category is going to be Access Flying, and this is a 2.4. Make sure you find the one that matches yours. Then head down to your device. This is a RX, which means receiver. This isn't a transmitter. This is a receiver. So I went to RX. The next thing is my flashing method, and that is going to be beta flight pass through. Very, very cool. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's going to be rare, but there's going to be a pilot or two or, well, in the future, probably none. But there may be a pilot or two, and I want to get you guys too, that may not have this beta flight pass through option for their receiver. And if that happens, that's okay. Just hold on to your seat. Let me walk these guys through, and then I'll get to you. All right, so beta flight pass through, check. We've got all of our other stuff, check. Regulatory, check. Binding phrase, hey pilots, check. We've got our auto Wi-Fi on interval, check. I prefer one minute. Lock on first connection, check. Everything looks great. Everything looks absolutely great, mate. Our very next step is to head to this dropdown. If I click on it, there's no options, and that's because I'm not plugged in. And I wanna plug in together because this part is very important. On every ELRS receiver, there is going to be a boot 
a boot loader enforcer of some sort, whether that's a boot button, whether that's jumper pads, whether it's just one pad, whatever that may be. What I wanna tell you is if you're rocking one of these very common receivers, you're gonna have a boot button right here. Do you see it? Look at that, boot. I'm clicking that, see that? Now I'm gonna grab this one, look at this one, this happy model, wow, look at the size of that boot button. That's a big one. Look at this one, this is one of my all time favorites, the Super D with the Gemini. And look, what? lo and behold, boot button right here. Okay, there's gonna be those rare scenarios where there is no boot button and you're gonna have two little solder pads that just don't go anywhere. I want you to grab solder and feed it in there and put a blob of solder over both. If you can't manage to do that, just grab a little piece of wire, snip it and put the wire over it and solder both ends of the wire down to where you are connecting those two pads together, okay? Now, very, very rare, and that is why I busted this puppy out, and it is gonna be hard to see because she is very, very tiny. This one here only has one boot button pad. Well, how can I bridge together two pads if I only have one pad? Simple, you're just gonna bridge that pad to ground. So go ahead and take that boot, connect it to ground, and now this one will now be in boot mode, okay? So if you have a boot button, hold it. If you've got a solder pad or boot pads or only one pad, solder to ground, the boot pads, solder together. Everybody got it? If you don't got it, jump down in the comments. I'll help you out. All right, now that we've got that, so watch me. I'm gonna grab this. Boom, okay? I am now holding my boot button down. Same thing you need to do. Then you're gonna grab your cord and you're gonna go ahead and power up. Notice what I'm doing. I'm holding boot and I'm powering up. Notice I didn't get my normal lights that I normal get and that's okay. Now I'm gonna jump back to that same drop down gonna be COM 12 and I'm gonna hit flash. Boom, and there you go, you are flashed and ready to go. Once it has completed, you can unplug everything, repower up, and you really should already be ready to go if your binding phrases match, or if you wanna set up home Wi-Fi, you can do that next. All right, pilots, so there's gonna be my pilots out there that this did not work, or did not have the beta flight pass-through option, or whatever that may be, and that is where this beautiful hunk of chunk comes in. This is the Beta FPV Recovery Dongle. This is made specifically for ELRS receivers when they get jammed up or stuck. This puppy is like eight bucks. No reason not to have one. Actually, even cheaper, if you want to spend even less money, go ahead and get you an FTDI adapter, and that's a puppy that looks just like this. And I'm going to give you a quick pointer. I'm going to show you on the dongle, but it's the same exact thing when you're using the FTDI adapter. You do have to have this connection or make sure your uh, uh, adapter that you purchase has the correct plug for what you have. Uh, do not use this RX and TX right here. You've got five volts, RX, TX, and a ground. You cannot use these two. They are not the same as the two that are over here. Make sure that you connect to the two RX and TX that are over here or else it's just simply not gonna work. But what I wanna do is I wanna show you how to do it on the dongle. With this comes this super cool little dealio. It's this puppy right here with like springs. What's cool about this is if you line everything up properly, you can just kinda hold it over like that and then push down to make your connection so you're not sitting here soldering each and every wire just for a two second flash, really. So what we'll do is I'll probably do that with you guys. Let's go ahead and do that together just for fun. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect this up. And you can do this your way, uh, you can do this this way or you can go ahead and connect them by actually soldering them on. That's 100% up to you. All right, so I've connected all four. I made sure that they're in line, boom. And this is important because once I plug this in, these are gonna become hot. These are gonna be live, five volt ground. That means if I touch, I may get some sparks, you feel me? So ground is right here, and that's gonna go right there. So something that we need to know is this top one is TX. And this is important. This is no different than soldering to your receiver. RX and TX must cross or it won't work. What you're going to need in order to do this is you're gonna plug in your dongle and see if you get connection. If you do, then that means your drivers are all set. 
If not, you may need to download the CP2102 drivers. Not a big deal. I'll, what I'll do is I'll put links for those down in the video description. So if you go to use this and your computer's not responding, I'll give you all of the links that you need down in the video description to get your drivers working. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to plug in our dongle. You heard that? That means mine's working. Yours is probably working too. But if not, you'll have them there. Keep in mind, you've got two rows of connectors. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, so if I pull that out, you've got a top row and you've got a bottom row. If I look at the top, I can clearly see TX, RX, 5 volt ground. If I flip it, I've got other things like boot, EN, 3.3, etc. I'm not going to use the bottom. Uh, my guess is that that would have to do with updating the dongle itself or maybe more advanced features. But for us, not important right now. So I'm going to go to the top row. And I'm going to plug that in. And we're going to set this up the same way. Access flying, 2.4. Access door, 2.4. RX. I'm going to head down. The only thing that's going to change is I'm going to take it off beta flight pass through. And I'm going to click on UART. You're going to check out all of your settings and make sure that they are all the same and they all still match. And then we're going to hit flash as soon as we're ready. So I'm super excited. And how this is going to work is I'm going to grab this same boot button. If you don't have a boot button, you need to bridge them together. If you don't have two to bridge, bridge the actual boot pad to the ground pad that they give you that's actually nearby generally because they know that you may need it. Then what we're going to do is we need to be a thousand percent sure, like I said, that we are connecting properly. So here we go. I'm going to flip this over. Ground is on the right. If I use this and I flip this over, ground is on the right. See it right there? So I can safely go like that. I'm not going to touch it because it's going to come live as soon as I touch it. So what I need to do now is I need to grab that boot button. So I'm going to grab my tweezers and I'm going to hold down that boot. Then I'm going to grab my adapter and I'm going to touch it. As soon as I touch it, it's going to give power. That power is going to power up my receiver. And then at that point, I can click flash. So let's go ahead and do this together. So I'm going to hold down my boot button. Okay, here we go. All right. Now that I'm connected, I'll scroll down. I want to click here. Make sure you have the silicone labs. I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to flash. Some builds take longer than others. Please give it its time. But as you can see, it says success. That means that everything has written the way that it was supposed to write. And if we look at our receiver, we now have a flashing light. That is awesome, awesome news. And that is how to unbrick your ELRS receiver. I hope that you guys had as much fun as I did. And I will see you on the next one. <laughs>